Well, I think we've given people a few minutes to get here, so let's get started now. Hi, Melissa. Hello, Celeste. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm very well. All right. To the rest of you, I normally begin these presentations by saying, welcome future lawyers. But you're not future lawyers. You are lawyers already, at least if... Um, you are sitting for the California attorney's exam soon. That means you're a lawyer in another U.S. jurisdiction. So I say, welcome future California lawyers to this BarMax webinar on the California attorney's exam. In today's webinar, we're going to uh, have a couple announcements up front just about how we're here to help you. And then Melissa, who is our longest serving, longest tenured bar max uh, tutor. Um, you've been here longer than I have. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> My face is around a lot more these days. We've both, uh, we're both very active in helping students pass the bar exam. And in Melissa's case, uh, that includes the California bar exam and the California attorney's exam. So Melissa will dive into what the attorney's exam is. I will show some BarMax materials, what we have for you. Uh, one of the offerings specific to attorney's exam is somewhat new, so we want you to know about it. And um, Melissa, again, will come back with our efficient study strategies. What really makes BarMax different? Um, well, okay, our lectures are phenomenal. We have some of the best uh, leading lecturers in the country on various subjects. Uh, but what makes it work and what makes it work efficiently and what will make it work for you for the attorney's exam is uh, active study. That is not the last time you'll hear that term during this presentation, but Melissa will show you how to use the materials to do that effectively. And she'll also show you some extra resources we have in BarMax. Everyone's situation is different, so we will stick around for a little Q&A. And with that, I'm going to kick it over to Melissa to talk about what is the attorney's exam and what's on it. Okay. Thank you, Celeste. I'm going to just get my share my screen here. One second. I have too many windows open. Okay. Sharing my screen. Perfect. Okay. The California Attorney's Exam. Today, first of all, I'm going to talk about what the exam is and the nuts and bolts of what you need to know before you start studying for the exam. The first thing is, what is the exam? It's a one day written exam. So the regular whole bar exam is two days. The first day is the written portion. The second day is the multiple choice. On the California attorney's exam, you only do day one, which is the written part of the exam. So it consists of five 60-minute essays, so five one-hour essays, and one 90-minute performance test. Now, a lot of questions we get right off the bat from attorneys from other jurisdictions is, should I take the whole bar exam? Well, even if you excel at multiple choice questions, you have to pass the written portion of the California bar anyway. It's both types in both parts you have to pass. So by focusing on the attorney's exam and only the first portion of the exam, you really give yourself the opportunity to focus in on that written part of the exam so you can be successful. The multiple choice questions require a different skill set. So instead of studying and splitting your time between both portions, you have the advantage of focusing just on that written portion. So at this point, even though you may do well on multiple choice questions, you're still splitting your time. So if you have that option, focus on the written portion and take the attorney's exam. 
what topics are tested on the exam. So here we have all the, what we call the core seven subjects or the ones tested on the multiple choice as well. Civil procedure, crimes, contracts, constitutional law, evidence, real property and torts in the left column. You'll notice for civil procedure and evidence, I included federal law and California law. The written portion of the exam, the essays do test on federal and California, one or the other or both, depending on the type of question. So you do need to know both the federal rules of civil procedure and the California uh, rules of civil uh, procedure, also the federal rules of evidence and the California evidence code. The other subjects that are tested, remedies, agency and partnership, corporations, trusts, wills, and community property, which is typically the divorce family law portion that's uh, tested in California. A lot of questions and we uh, talk about how is the exam scored because you're only taking the first part. And that's a really good question. So each essay is gonna receive a score between 40 and 100. This is considered your raw score. And what we typically think about is 65 is considered a passing score. Your performance test is worth two essays. So it receives a raw score between 80 and 200 points. So there's a total possible of 700 raw points. That just means that that raw number is then put into a formula and it's called, it's scaled. It's a formula that takes into consideration the difficulty of multiple exams to create one uniform difficulty of exam. And it's a statistical formula. What you're looking to pass is a total score of 1390 or more. Oh, and that is the part um, of our second part. So Celeste, I think I'm gonna turn it back over to you to talk about some of the uh, resources and welcome packets. Celeste, I think you're muted. Oh, is that okay? I didn't realize she was still. Yeah, I was talking away. No. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I wasn't sure if you were waiting. Okay. It's, it's, it was uh, a throwback to 2020 where the phrase of the year was you're muted. Okay. Um, so here, here I am in the Barmax attorneys exam course um, for each subject. You'll see that we do have. For example, here in contracts, we have lecture segments. There are seven lecture segments for each subject and flashcards for each subject. If you look at the lecture segments, um, if I click this, it's gonna start to play, but I'll quickly stop it. There we go. Um, you'll see an outline here. And that outline will also be provided to you in written form. So in a book, something like this, um, that has the California bar exam and attorney's exam outlines. Um, if, so you can follow along during the lecture. You'll notice that in the subjects where there are distinctions, um, you'll see a professional responsibility is actually one of those because California requires that, uh, wants you to know both the ABA model rules and the California rules. So if we take a look here, for example, at- In this lecture, we turn to the foundation. Section three, you'll see that parts of it pop up in blue. Those are the California distinctions to enable you to learn the law side by side that's the same in evidence and civil procedure. So that's what's here under lectures and flashcards. And um, Melissa will talk more about how to kind of fit that into your study plan. 
But what's really important and what you might not see right away is the welcome packet. Because when you want to study essays, you'll be tempted to go here. But frankly, I think the better place to go is where you have all the essays and the essay answers um, accessible to you. So I'm going to go to my profile. And in my profile, I'll see the welcome packet. Now I'm on the welcome packet page. People always say, how did you do that? So I'm going to go back, upper right-hand corner, profile, click profile, and then click view welcome packet. Here I am. There is a study calendar specifically for the California attorney's exam now. And it is written as an 11 week calendar, which means coincidentally that it starts next week. Does that mean that you must take 11 weeks, a full 11 weeks and no more than 11 weeks to study for the bar? or the attorney's exam? Of course not. You can spread those assignments out over a longer period of time if you want to give yourself more time to review. And you can condense it if you have less time, feel like you need less time to review. Um, this is very comprehensive. And again, right to support, we can give you some ideas about how to condense it. So uh, Melissa will talk to you a little bit about how to use this calendar to the best effect, but you'll see that there is really an application pay phase of study, a review phase, and a memorization phase of study. Down here below the calendar in the welcome packet are all of the practice essays. You can line them up by subject or by year, and this is how they are assigned. So we recommend that when you're working on an essay, you pull it from the left-hand column here. If I had assigned February 2018 question one, or if that were my assignment and I wanted to do it, I would go down here and say, okay, here I am. You know, can I rescind this contract? Oh my goodness, um, I'm already in the weeds. So that's where you would look at your question and, and uh, go through your outlining and looking up the rules and getting your answer together. Later, when you want to compare it to a sample answer, you can find this, the essay sample answers here in the second column. The exam tests the subjects that Melissa talked about, but it also has a performance test component. Now, back in the day, California's performance test component was three hours, no more. <laughs> Pardon me. The, the performance test component is 90 minutes. So it's a more streamlined performance test that uh, resembles the um, MPT. So here we have all of the California performance tests that have been released since the change. Going back to the main page of BARMAX. So you know now how to find the main course materials, the lectures, the flashcards, and the welcome packet with essays, performance tests, and sample answers to essays and performance tests. We also have um, office hours, we have under the essay tab, we have um, some roadmaps, which are a great tool Melissa might show you. And we also have a place here to submit essays for grading, which is something we recommend that you do early and often. Um, our courses come, um, and I think this includes the attorney's exam course, they come with 10 essay reviews. Um, I think that's right. Katie, do you know if the attorney exam course comes with that? If not, they're pretty economical to buy in a package of 10. Um, and if you submit one a week starting uh, next week, no, you'll run into the deadline. So submit two a week until you uh, get plenty of feedback and improve your writing that way. Or meet with a Barmax tutor. This is where you schedule your, your sessions with your tutor. Um, so it's pretty good platform to use, pretty easy to use, the only tricky part being where to find that 
welcome packet that has the calendar or a study plan and the essays. So um, I wanted to show everyone that. I'll, I'll look and see if there's any questions I should answer in chat. Um, but Melissa, back to you. All right. There we go. Hello. All right. I'm back. All right. Let me start to share my screen one more time here. We're going to talk about how to study for the exam. Now that you know how to find all your materials, now it's going to be how do you prepare with that study calendar and with the essays, the performance tests, and those selected answers. Like I said earlier, you're going to use your past the past essays and performance tests to study. That seems counterintuitive to some people. What? How am I going to do that when I don't know the black letter law? You are gonna learn the black letter law from doing the questions. And that's how what we call the open book bar exam study method. And what that means is that you're gonna go and look up the rules in the outline, put them in your answer, and then use those rules to answer the question. Instead of guessing and then reviewing later on, you're going to be more actively engaged in learning the knowledge, which is going to put all that information in your long-term memory and allow you to recall it on the exam. Now, we're going to talk about the open book bar exam um, study method in a minute. I have listed on this slide the other BARMEX resources that Celeste has touched on that we're going to talk about how you can use them actively to learn how to take the exam and the Black Letter Law. So those are the lectures, flashcards, office hours, roadmaps, the essay submission portal, and BARMAX tutoring. So what is this open book bar exam study method? Some of you may have watched let's see, let's see. Celeste's office hour webinar called the open book bar exam study method. If you haven't, I definitely suggest that you go and watch that before you begin studying. It's going to give you such great insight into the why we recommend this, this process and the reasons why it works. But what we're going to talk about today is how to do it. The I just want yes. to say that video is really long. And I know that many of these people mm. have jobs. So <laughs> if you want to focus on just kind of the why and how to do it, um, I would say like start around minute five. And it goes through an MBE question first. So you can sort of watch part of that and then jump ahead to about minute 30, I think is where it starts going through an essay. Um, and there's another similar office hour called using essay questions to learn the law. But just if you watch for a few minutes, starting around minute five of open book bar exam study, you'll understand why we do it. We do it because it's active and helps you retain the material better. So perfect. Thank I just didn't want them watching the whole thing. <laughs> it is. It is long. It is like an hour 45, I think, total. So it is a really long one. <laughs> but we're going to, and if you don't have time or you're just going to watch that part, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to use the essays to learn your, learn that black letter law. And here's the, I've summarized the process for you. We're You're going to read those calls of the question and we're going to go grab one in a second and read the call of the question. Then we're going to read the facts, all that, all those paragraphs, those two, three, four paragraphs of the question. Then you're going to identify the issues. The issue may be given in that call of the question, or you may have to find it within the facts. It depends on the type of question you're given. Once you identify those issues, you look up the issue, the topic in the outline and find the rule. Then in your, what if either you're outlining or you're writing the uh, essay answer, you're going to write that rule in the rule part of your IRAC. And then you're going to find those applicable specific facts, apply the facts to the rule in the analysis and come up with the answer to the question. Now, when you're beginning and you're practicing, 
it's going to go slower. Don't be concerned. The, this is a process which will get faster upon learning more of the information, becoming comfortable with it, and being able to apply it. We don't work too much on timed uh, exams until later on, once you've at least gone through most of the subjects, the, because the idea is this first phase is learning. Then we move on to reviewing where we start doing some practice exams and then the memorization where you can do some more timed. But don't worry about timing at this point. All right, so I'm going to, let's go on and go look at the, the program and we're gonna bring up a question and use this study method to answer the question. All right, I'm gonna stop my sharing for a second here. And we're gonna go to the BarMax course. Perfect. All right, so now we're in the BarMax course. I also like to go to the welcome packet to grab our essays. That way everything is there, essay, the question, the answer, and it's all in one spot. So we're gonna do that here. My program looks just like what Celeste showed you a minute ago. So you go to your name up here and go to the profile. Scroll all the way down again. Let's go to the welcome packet. And the essay we are going to look at is Civil Procedure, July 2021, question one. So if that's on your study calendar, there's two ways you can find it. You can go by subject and scroll through till you find July 2021, or you can go by year. And I'm going to, I, I prefer finding them by year. So I am going to go click on July 2021 20, and it's question one. So it's the first one we see. This is a civil procedure question. And let me see if I can get it all on one screen. So what we're going to do is employ that open book bar exam study method. We're going to read the calls of the question. Today, we're going to just focus on question one for the sake of time. but when you do this on your own, you'll do it for each and every issue, each and every question. So the first question here is, was venue properly laid in the Eastern District of California? Well, this is the type of question where it gives you the issue right in the call of the question. Was venue properly laid? Was venue proper? So we know we're going to go look at the venue portion of the civil procedure outline. But we don't know what facts we're gonna need or what specific role of venue we need. So we need to read the facts in order to narrow down what we're going to need to look for in the outline. So let's read the facts so we can have an idea of what venue role we, we're gonna need. Jeff, a California citizen who resides in Truckee, California, just, went, just west of Reno, Nevada, provides cleaning services. At Jeff's request, Customers submit written evaluations of his services so he can monitor their satisfaction. Jif entered into a contract with Shearer, a Nevada citizen who operates a beauty salon in Reno, Nevada. The contract signed by Re signed in Reno obligated Jif to do use due care in cleaning. One night while cleaning, Jif accidentally broke an antique vase which Shearer claimed was worth $100,000. All right, now we get into the lawsuit, right? Shearer sued Jif for negligence in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of California, which includes Truckee. All right, so we have Shearer, the plaintiff, suing Jif, the defendant. We need to know if the United States District Court for the Eastern District of California is the proper venue. So let's go back to our outline. So we were in the welcome uh, welcome packet. We're going to go over back to all subjects and go into civil procedure. And now we need to figure out where venue is. Subject matter jurisdiction, personal jurisdiction, no. Venue and choice of law. Well, here's our venue section. So we're going to click on the lecture. And venue is our first issue. 
So when you're doing this in your active engaged studying, what you're going to do is read through this whole section. Why? Well, the why is really to look at the material, to understand the different smaller issues in venue, and then be able to pinpoint what exact role you need to put on your in your answer. It also gives you the opportunity to actively engage in the material instead of just simply listening. So here we have what, what proper venue is, the four federal district courts in California, the Northern, Eastern, Central, and Southern, and individuals. Well, do we have an individual or do we have a business in our question? We have an individual. Shearer sued Jif, not the business, not the cleaning service, but Jif individually. So he's an individual. So let's see. In a diversity case, in diversity cases and federal question cases, venue is proper in any district where 1A, all defendants are domiciled, or 1B, where a substantial portion of the claim arose. There is subject matter jurisdiction over the claim, and there is personal jurisdiction over the parties. Well, that just got interesting because now it's not just a venue question, but we need to make sure there's subject matter jurisdiction and personal jurisdiction. So here for this rule, you're going to type that into your answer and then continue and apply your facts to the rule. And you may need to then lean on or go back to the subject matter jurisdiction to see if there's subject matter jurisdiction over the claim by the court and whether the Eastern District of California has personal jurisdiction over GIF. So let's go back to our question. Here's our question. The first thing is where all venue is proper, where all defendants reside or a substantial portion of the claim arose. Well, where does Jif, who is our defendant, reside? Jif is a California citizen who resides in Truckee and Truckee is in the Eastern District of California, right here. So is Jif domiciled in the district? Yes, yes. So we have proper jurisdiction there for venue. Then we also need to decide whether there's proper subject matter jurisdiction and personal jurisdiction. And you can go over to the subject matter jurisdiction section and the personal jurisdiction section of the outline in order to figure that out. We can do that by going back to our civil procedure and finding our subject matter jurisdiction lecture and looking at when a court has subject matter jurisdiction. Remember, there's two different kinds, federal question and diversity of citizenship. So do we remember where everyone was located? Jeff is a, a resident of what? California. Shearer was a resident of Nevada. So, and this, it was a negligence claim. So we say, well, was there a federal question? No. When we're looking at it, we, and when you're looking at what issues to discuss in this type of question, you want to discuss whether there's a federal question and then whether there's diversity and go through that analysis. So you would put both rules down and go ahead and discuss that. In this case, it would be very quick because there's diversity between the two parties. Shear is from Nevada, Schiff is from California, and the amount in controversy is exceeds $75,000. And that's how you're going to use the open book method. You're going to do all the leg work and looking up the rules at the beginning so that you can write a really good analysis starting from day one. This is going to teach you how to answer these questions for the bar exam so that you can be successful in your writing. Now, when we look at question number two, it's a completely different issue. Did the court err in denying Shearer's motion to compel? 
So you're going to focus on a different aspect of civil procedure, uh, motions to compel, which is going to implicate your discovery. So you go to the discovery section. We'll go back here. Discovery section of the outline. Here it is. And then go ahead and find the correct rule that would talk about that you would apply to your facts. So this is exactly what you're going to do throughout all looking at all the subjects for the first time. This is your learning phase, the open book bar exam study method. Now, what do you want to do about performance tests? Because performance tests do not test substantive knowledge. They give you everything you need to know. It has a task memo, a file, which includes all your facts that you're going to use, and your library, which includes all the rules, all the authority you're going to use to answer the questions and the issues that you're given. But how do you study for it? Well, one of the pitfalls of being an attorney already is that you write memos probably all the time or briefs, closing arguments, oral arguments you may make in court. You may do that already, but what the what you do in practice does not always exactly what the bar examiners want in their answer. So let's talk about uh, for a minute how you're going to study for that because it's also very important to have a passing score on this part of the exam because it's worth two essays. So how do you find your performance tests? We're going to go back to our profile. Go down back to our welcome packet. And go to the third column and pick a performance test to look at. Now, there aren't as many, but there's enough for you to practice and see the varieties um, from when they changed from three hours to 90 minutes. So that happened around 2017. So we're going to, I'm going to take a look at, just to give you an idea, uh, July 2022. And again, you can see, you click on it, it comes right up onto your screen. In one second. Now, how do you prepare for this portion of the exam? Part of preparing is going to be developing your process and how you're going to attack each and every question. And we have many office hours that you can watch that walk through the different aspects of preparing the answer to the performance test. And there's also going to be in the calendar, which we'll take a look at in a second, how um, a couple performance test workshops that you're going to be able to look at and practice doing these questions. So on this performance test, we're just going to take a look at the parts. The cover page gives you, this is the, the instructions, what's in the file. So this is the facts. The memor there's a memorandum, there's uh, excerpts from a blog, and a complaint. Here's your instructions that you'll be given that you can read through. And this is what we call the task memo. You're going to read the task memo and you're going to find what the task is, what the issues are, which, what tone that the graders want to see, and you'll proceed going through that process. And always make sure that the default format is going to be IRAC. So Always think about writing your answer in IRAC, no matter what type of task you're given. And this is ver a very straightforward test memo where it lays out your two issues that they want you to address right here. And it talks about drafting an objective memorandum. And I would suggest then if you were unsure or have not done performance tests in a while, start by watching a couple office hours. So if we go back to the main course, our office hours are a great tool to use in order to 
understand how to a concept and how to apply it on the bar exam. Now, we have a vast library of office hours, which is amazing and it's a great resource, but how do you use it? My favorite tool is this topics, the search right here. It gives you the ability to just filter out exactly what you're looking for. Right now we're looking for performance tests. So we're it's in alphabetical order. So we're gonna go down, I'm gonna click on performance tests and we're gonna see our results. So there's six, I think there was seven. Yep, seven different videos that we've done that will help you with different aspects of the performance test. One of the most valuable ones is going to be this live performance test workshop where we're going to ask you to actually do one of the MPTs, which is part of the UB exam, but they're very similar. They just happen in different uh, fictional states. Uh, most California usually happens in Columbia, the UBE, the MEE in particular, or the MPT will um, take place in Franklin. But they're very similar. They can give you extra practice if you go through all the California uh, practice tests. And it will help develop your strategy of how you're going to approach these questions. Are you going to write as you go? Are you going to read an outline for 45 minutes and then write for 45 minutes? And you're going to be able to develop every time you practice what works for you so that you're able to have a good product and a successful passing answer within those 90 minutes. So there's, this is one great tool to use are these office hours. We also have some live office hours that we do over the course of the cycle that you can watch live like this particular webinar, if you're watching live, or they do come and are put in the library within a few days. So if you miss it, you'll be able to see it within a few days. Office hours are what we consider secondary sources. So these are things you should not watch in your very active studying. It should be something you watch toward the end of your study time or in an evening. So because it, even though it's more active because we're more engaged than maybe a lecture because you're just hearing their voice, you, it's still more passive than your active studying using the open book method actually doing the essay questions or actually doing performance tests. So what you want to do is temper this so that use this as a secondary source, but not as in within your very active study time. That's where we want you mostly most engaged. The next thing I want to show you with regards to all our resources is our roadmaps, which are really helpful when you don't know how to structure your answer or what issues to address when you're given a certain topic. We're gonna to go back to that venue question that and think about that. So roadmaps you can find under this bar right here. You wanna click on the essays and here we have by subject, by year, roadmaps. Let's select roadmaps. Now for our most tested topics, we have these roadmaps and they're broken down by subject. Since we were in civil procedure, we're gonna look and try to find if there's a venue roadmap. Oh, look, there is. Let's select that. And this is going to help you structure, how do I go about, if I have a venue question, what do I write? These are meant to help. Steps for transfer venue. Now, in our question, we didn't have a transfer of venue issue. We just had was venue proper. So we need to look a little further down, look general venue rule. And this is taken from our outline. But you want to be able to use those key phrases and words that trigger the greater knowledge that you know what the rule is, even if it's stated slightly differently. It's those key phrases to include that are really important. And so you by writing them multiple times, by that multiple reinforcement, by using the open book bar exam study method, that's how you're going to have those key phrases and words within your long-term memory in order to be able to recall it on the exam. And so this talks about what the rule is, 
you only have to show one method. Just like when we talked about with the individual and Jif was a domiciled in the Eastern District where the case was filed, that satisfied that was proper venue. Here, any defendant resides, if all defendants reside in the same state, he's the only one. An individual resides in the district where he domiciles here. And this is where you would write your analysis. Here, Jif is domiciled in Truckee, California. He is a resident there. Be because he is domiciled in Truckee, which is within the Eastern District of California, then the uh, Eastern District of California is a proper venue. And it also talks about personal jurisdiction over an individual and all, uh, I think we have corporations, unincorporated associations, and then I think it goes into subject matter jurisdiction as well, right? Because you need all three for exact um, proper venue. And then talking about change of venue, which was outside the scope of our answer. But you can see how it gives you all the different frameworks for modeling your answer on your essay. So if you have structure or format questions, this is where you want to go. And there are many different, that would the, all of these were just for civil procedure. We have them for many of the different issues, as you can see, that come up on essays. Right. Why don't we look at flashcards? Because we mentioned flashcards. When should we use flashcards? Our flashcards are a great resource because having writing out old school flashcards is not time efficient and you'll end up with too many and you won't have time to study them. You'll spend all your time writing them. So our electronic flashcards are amazing and you can find them in two different ways. You can click on the flashcards itself. And it will give you all the flashcards for the different sections. Or if you go to all subjects, and if you click on civil procedure like we did, there's the flashcards are un within underneath the lecture for each section. So if we click on subject matter jurisdiction, there's 25. It's going to have the question. And when you click on it, you'll get your answer. My favorite feature is that you can choose incorrect or that you got it meaning you got it correct, or you can skip it. And it, it filters, the program filters it into two different piles. So if you're getting some right, some wrong, you can re go over the ones you get incorrect, which I think is a phenomenal function. When should you use these flashcards? The flashcards should be used in more of your review, the second phase and the third phase memorization of the program, because this is where you're now drilling yourself, testing yourself. Do you know these rules? Have you learned them the first time? And this is going to be more reinforcement, putting it in your longer term memory. Flashcards are such a great um, resource, especially in your review and memorization when you want to make sure you know those rules, those key phrases that are so important to write down for the examiners to give you credit. Right, let's see. I'm gonna make sure I get through all, I've talked about all of the different facets, lectures, flashcards, essays, porn tests. Um, essay submission portal, which Celeste talked about and what to use. I highly recommend you use that. It's so important to have more eyes on your work especially to just ensure that you're doing what you're supposed to, even though you're watching office hours, even if you're using roadmaps and your answers are looking like, for the most part, selected answers, then that's great. Use these resources to make sure all of that is coming together so that you can be successful and there are no surprises when you take the exam or get your results back. Um, the last thing is tutoring. Tutoring is something that I know you have um, some people are unsure of what tutoring can bring you. Tutoring can do a lot of different things. It can bring you accountability. Now, we're 
10, 11 weeks out. So next week would be 10. You know, that weekly or every two weeks uh, check in, making sure you're on the right track, making sure that you're not doing it alone. Sometimes it's very isolating when you're working, when you're studying, when you have other commitments. And so that accountability of knowing someone's going to check in with you, you know, you have to have certain things done and you have these benchmarks you need to meet. That's all helpful in keeping up with that calendar and also keeping uh, morale up in order to, you know, be successful. It can also, you know, improve your writing. Writing is an art, but it's also on the bar exam, very formulistic. And so once you get into that formula, it is easier to uh, be able, and you'll see how to answer the question. It's becoming familiar, seeing the patterns only by doing that. And so when you have struggles or weaknesses and strengths, the tutor is going to be able to identify your strengths, your weaknesses, and give you that strategies to improve so that you can be successful and so that you don't get bogged down in certain aspects of your weaknesses as well. We all have weaknesses in our writing or when we're doing this formulistic approach. So we want to have strategies in place to address that so you can overcome it and then do even better on the exam, both in the essays and performance tests, because they're going to be there because they're two different parts of the written exam. You have to tackle them differently, just like I uh, discussed. Um, I think I talked about everything I wanted to. Celeste, did you have any? Uh, did I hit all the resources? I think I did. Did you talk about roadmaps? I got deep into chat oh, for a minute there. I did. I did talk about roadmaps. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you showed one so they see what they look like. Because that's I another did. great place to learn the rule. And I don't want you dissing people making their own flashcards. <laughs> during the review phase, during the review phase, it's a good idea, but don't do it at the beginning and don't take notes on the whole outline. Our lectures are great, especially if your last bar exam was a long time ago or did not include California subjects or, you know, hello, what's community property. If this is all completely foreign to you, absolutely listen to those lectures, but don't worry about absorbing it all at that point. Don't take copious notes. Don't try to make a flashcard for every rule. When you make strategic use of what I call your own study tools, because they might be flashcards, but they might be little charts or diagrams you write to visualize the rule. That's really helpful for me. Um, whatever it is, or it might be flashcards, they should be select flashcards, select rules. How do you know which ones to select? Well, they're in an essay question and you didn't get it right <laughs> in a practice, right? It, it's right. If it's something you exactly. already know, you know, if you know that uh, negligence is, you know, duty breach causation and damages, don't write a flashcard for that. Wasting your time, wasting your time reviewing it. If you're having trouble understanding the different standards of care that have shown up on the bar exam that apply to different kinds of defendants, write a flashcard for, for those kind of defendants or write a little chart that helps you see those defendants and, and what they're responsible for. That's one example. Um, remedies is another area, it's trickier on the California bar than it is on the UBE or on the MBE. There's just a lot more tested. Yeah, so I would say that might be an area where as you're coming across those rules in the essays, watch a flashcard. Then again, Melissa did a fabulous office hour on remedies, so that might be worth a watch also. Yeah, remedies is one of those questions where you don't think that, you know, they'll come up in contracts, they'll come in torts. we're pretty, that's pretty, but they do um, heavily test other maybe not as familiar remedies that um, you may learn about for the first time. Right. <laughs> this time right. around. Hello, Replevin. <laughs> anyway. Right. Um, exactly. You know, uh, yeah. So one question we saw a few times in chat, and this is where we get a little personal, is um, some of you have already, or you're already in the BarMax California program, but now you've realized, hey, 
I'm going to take the attorney's exam instead. I, I, I'm qualified according to the state of California by virtue of my licensure and continued practice in another state. Great. Um, you say, then how do I get that calendar or how do I access those resources? Honestly, everything in the Barmax attorney's exam program is already in Barmax California, except that study plan. So write to support, and I had a slide earlier, support at testmaxprep.com. Uh, we can throw that in chat. Uh, just write to support. It's people, I write it out because testmaxprep.com, people think of us as Barmax, but of course our company has, a, you know, another big product called LSAT Max. Um, so support at testmaxprep.com will um, just ask them, hey, can I have the attorney's exam study plan? And if you are already a paid California Barmax student, then we'll send you that study plan and you can transition without changing courses in your um, program. You can also change courses in your program. We just need to make sure you get access to sort of that view. But the secret is you already have access to all of the materials and more. You have MBE questions and you won't need MBE questions. Um, Melissa talked earlier about why it's not a good idea to take the whole bar exam, if you are qualified to take just the attorney's exam. So ignore the MBE questions. They are torture devices. They're not really helpful for learning the rules as they're tested on essays. I mean, you know, tangentially, but would you torture yourself that much when you can study, as Melissa showed you, actively from the essays themselves? The study plan has you going through a lot of essays. It's very comprehensive. So I think that was kind of the main question over in Q&A. Um, and I answered that one, but there's, is there still enough time to prepare for the February exam? 100% yes, absolutely. John, good question. Um, the study plan begins next week. So if you want to follow it, you know, beat for beat, you would start next week. Of course, we would say buy Bar Max attorney's exam with the discount this right. week, maybe today, and start right away. There's no reason not to. As soon as you buy it, you have access. In fact, if this gets posted somewhere and you're watching this in the distant future and you say, well, I want to take an attorney's exam and it's five months away. That's fine too, because you can study for a short time or a long time with Barmax. A lot of our competitors just have a window where their program is open. We don't play like that. You buy our product, you have our product until you pass the exam you need. Um, so, or, or for two exam cycles, I think is what we're doing now. Um, so that's one set of questions I got, uh, another set of questions that comes up and has come up again is, um, about foreign attorneys, foreign attorneys, unfortunately cannot sit for the exam we're talking about today, but they can sit for the full California bar exam in some circumstances. California is very particular about what education qualifies. They look at, you know, whether you're from a civil law or common law country. And if you're from a civil law country, did you study this or that? You know, I don't even understand how it works. I won't pretend to be remotely qualified. But the California Bar website lists, the calbar.org lists all of those qualifications. So Figure out if you're qualified to take the California bar exam. And if you are, yes, bar max can help you prepare. Okay. But in your case, you'll need the entire bar max California program. Um, but you'll need the bar max California program. And, um, and that will help you prepare. I was chatting with another student and saying, look, we do have some office hours, video materials, extra resources that are designed to help prepare foreign attorneys. 
we have a basic U.S. course for foreign lawyers and how to prepare for the bar exam as a foreign lawyer, which talks about some of the challenges that people, especially people from civil law countries, face with Iraq, which is a completely different way of writing than um, than is expected from you in your uh, law practice and education at home. So learning Iraq and shedding some habits to make it the sort of simple and formulaic robotic formula <laughs> that the California bar wants um, is, is a skill you'll have to learn. And we have several videos about that one recent one about Iraq um, and another older one that's specifically geared toward foreign lawyers. Um, we also have for everyone who needs a brush up on U.S. constitutional law, um, uh, one of our UBE tutors, Nate, recently did an overview of con law where he draws a big picture. <laughs> His notes are kind of incredible and mind blowing, but he puts it all in a big picture. So if you need the big picture of U.S. constitutional law as tested on the bar exam, whether you're a lawyer or a um, Oh, you know, whether you're a foreign lawyer or, or a U.S. trained person, that would be really helpful. Katie, Katie has just posted the page, California Bar Requirements for Foreign Lawyers. So go there, read the regulations carefully. Figuring out whether regulations apply to you is part of what you were trained to do as a lawyer. So go ahead and do that. And then, um, the California bar is very responsive. So write to them, send them emails if you have questions about those qualifications. So I would say if you're a foreign lawyer approaching US bar exam for the first time, you should be aiming for July 2024 right now. Um, you, probably in, you probably just don't want to dive in for February. I think the deadline to register, it's the late deadline is open, but the point is why register for an exam and then not give yourself really the adequate time you need to prepare. Ask us for the extended study plan for the California bar exam, and you can start um, leading up to that. You write to us and say, hey, this is how much time I have. Um, this is where I'm coming from. My statute, my state in life will write you a program. We're very personalized about how to adapt our programs and calendars to any situation. Okay, so I think I've hit the Q&A or is there another one? Um, I think that was it. I think you answered. So I answered live, done. And I think there's nothing left in, in chat that I missed, right? Um, I think so. We've got it. So... We've got somebody who, you know, may have access already and we're helping him out and finding out about that. Um, yeah, so um, the full program does not include tutoring. Um, no, it doesn't come with tutoring. The tutoring is purchased separately. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you, Melissa, for showing everyone what to do. Uh, we want to see these people become California lawyers. We Absolutely. want them on the pass list in February. Uh, so I hope that people found this helpful. And uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. Good luck, everyone. Thank you.